Hey guys, and today we are going to going to continue my um, new series on the French defense, mastering the French defense, basically. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at the exchange variation. Yes, the boring French variation. Now, even though it's going to be a bit boring, it's very important you, you have to know this. Um, if you want to master the French, not only just to know it, because most people might play against you. Um, and I'll talk about that why later in the video, but for now we are just going to um, look at the main lines and what you should do and what you should not do, but what, I mean, it won't be really harmful. Um, and, and what you can do, but not the best to do. Um, so, but, but it doesn't, but, like, if, if you're not comfortable playing that way, then you can just play your way, like, calm. Um, if you're not aggressive, then don't play aggressive, because chances are you won't really spend much time attacking. You'll probably spend, spend much time fixing your weaknesses. And when you're and when you're supposed to be aggressive, you don't have time for those small things. So, um, yeah. But anyways, let's um, let's move on. So, first of all, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. So. Let's get started. And also, if you haven't watched my um, part one in this series, then you should definitely watch it because it's um, watch it before you watch this one because it it has some key French ideas, French defense ideas, and you, you need to know them if you're wanting to play the French. So go check that out and then come back. So let's move on. For my friends who have watched part one, so um, it's short and simple. E4, E6, right? E4, E6, French, classic French. D4, D5, and now after D5, um, it's all in white's hands. I mean, we can play this, right? We covered that in the previous video, and. I don't like he can do this, like give up this pawn, but it's best and, and he has a lot of options here. And most of them are not that good. Some of them are main lines and some of them are just lines that grandmasters created and surprisingly win. But no one else has played it till date. So um, yeah, so okay, let's look what happens if he takes E D five, he takes D five. Now now it <laughs> It's pretty boring now, right? There's so this is a pawn without e without the e7 and e2 pawns. Basically, these two. Basically, what I'm trying to say is two kings are very exposed. Boom and boom, and the pieces are not developed. So this board's pretty empty and leaves abilities. Just does something like knight f3, and then something like that. What I want you to cast queen side. Um, you don't have to do this. But I'd recommend you do, if you're not the aggressive guy, then, I mean, you probably shouldn't do this, but, I mean, you should give it a try. It's not that aggressive, so, yeah. Can knight d6, and he does d3 for some reason, I don't know why he would do that. But d6, cast, you want to shield your king, and this rook, and you're going to cast the queen, so it's going to take some time, so, knight g, e6, this again because the queen's protection is now off and now knight to c3 but now putting pressure on the pawn bishop to e6 bishop d2 queen to the pawn this by um so a lot of that but it's, it's kind of closed position still castle now we may have nine things that we have made game more boring, but um, yeah, I mean, you are correct for the time being, it's boring, 
But now what we do is if you've seen any of King, uh, if you've seen my King's Indian um, or Black video, then you probably know what to do. Just put nothing in the center. Oh, the center is solid. We can start attacking on the wings. Now, what, which wings should we attack on? The queen side wing or the king side wing? You're right. The king side. We don't have our king and expose our king by just moving our pawns. And attack your two close rook. This is where a bit weak. And he has this control, but I mean, the pawn can go here and is free. And we can always all the blockers and bring the rook up here and then move this pawn later and guard this pawn. And then we do that. But what I'm trying to tell you is back should attack and pull these pawns down board. And we have a spit king side, right? We're, we're, we're really dominating the king side, and all our pieces can access, access it easily. So, and this king is not going to be safe. But you don't have to play like this if you are not, if you're not aggressive. I mean, I wouldn't say this is that much of aggressive, but I mean. If you pay attention to your own weaknesses and um, you're not that aggressive, I mean, this is a little aggressive, but if you still don't really have, like, if you're not comfortable playing it, then don't play it. Um, instead, you just go for a symmetrical knight f6, um, bishop to d3, bishop to 6 castles, castles, alright, and... I don't recommend you play this way because it just makes the game more boring and we like it if you like your game. But if someone plays genius against you, then what they're trying to do is basically just suck the life out of the opening. Basically make the opening no fun. And basically a shortcut to the end game. Or he might dominate you if you're not good in your end game. And uh Quick reminder, you should work on end game right if you're not good at them. Um, I've always loved end games for some reason. I don't really like the middle. I mean, I, I, I like the opening second, but I, I really don't like the middle game for some reason. Um, unless you can guarantee it's me. Um, but yeah, there you go. The exchange, the very boring exchange variation that can turn into um, a king side attack and make you win and and for that player who's trying to suck the life out of open out of the opening you need to he needs he wants a calm game wants a calm transition to the end game make a lot of trades and make the board more opening more open and more boring but you cannot allow that you need to plunge in and and take care and take care of the calm game that might be in the future by attacking him and making him uncomfortable not calmer when you play the symmetrical variation but again it is all your choice so um i'm gonna leave it up to you so bye for now and see you in the next next french defense video that is the third part and i'm gonna be covering um, the other variations that there are and that will be the last video of the French Defense series. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye